ladies and gentlemen, for your enjoyment today, we've got set in the city sunshine, which is always great. Bernard Gollum, tribute uh, concert. We've got Dennis Tracy, Kate Delaney, and Justin Murphy. I'm sorry, I'm going to need better glasses, I think. Um, I hope you have a wonderful time. Hello, thanks for coming. I'm Dennis Tracy. And it's one of my greatest honours is that I'm one of Bernard's, I should say, oldest friends, and he's one of mine. I might have some older friends, but maybe not. So, okay, is that better? Shall I start again? Go off and come again? I'm Dennis Tracy. Thank you all for coming. And it's my great pleasure and honour to be one of Bernard's oldest friends. And, and he, he's one of mine. And that's a very nice thing. So thank you all for coming to this. this I hope it's going to be fun. In 1969, Bernard left Lancashire and came to Australia. He didn't come as a 10 or 5 pound pom. I think he paid, paid his way. The country needed in those days. Yeah. yeah. Um, settled in Sydney. At around that time, and I can't remember when, maybe 1970, 71, Justin Murphy and I and others organised a folk festival in Canberra, which is where I, we lived then. And there was a bloke called Mike Eaves who used to run a folk club at the Elizabeth Hotel, uh, the folk club that we all arranged to sing at. Is called the Liz. Anyway, he was he was a good musician, and he said, "There's a bloke here who you really need to get on the concert. And his name's Bernard Bolden, and he, he really is very good." And so approved. Now, at the time, as it happens, Mike Eaves had a companion who was the object of Bernard's unrequited and I suspect undeclared passion. <coughs> now this could have been difficult um, because we were, we were young in those days and, and, and not restrained and measured as we are now. <laughs> but it might be said that he was obsessed with, with her and as poets have always done, he expressed his passion in his work. You an interest, I'll tell you something that occurred to me just now. I'm just looking at all these amazing instruments. We can all afford much better guitars these days. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't make her mine, 
I could play the swine, I could leave my friend for flat. But of course no English gentleman would do a thing like that. But her hair is as fair as the summer corn, and it blows in the breeze. Though her eyes are soft and gentle, there are times they like to tease. And I know that for sure if she gave me a paw, I'd vow that I'd never leave her. So for me it's the tears, not the big floppy ears of Sally, the retriever. <laughs> I can fight, I can kill, I've been through the mill. I can graft, I can grind, I can grog. But of course no English gentleman who pinches best friend's dog. <laughs> Thank you. So here we are, old friends of Bernard's, new friends of Bernard's, come to celebrate, mark and laugh at his, his fantastic contribution to the folk scene and, and to Australian culture. There's a whole... We wouldn't have had as many laughs if, if it hadn't been for Bernard. Nor thought some deep thoughts. That's not bad. So, Bob and Margaret Fagan, uh, who have known Bernard for about as long as I have, although I've known them, or Bob anyway, for much longer. Bob was at university with Justin Murphy and me. Um, back in the day. <laughs> back in the day. hundred years ago. <laughs> so do you want to introduce the song? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Bernard. <laughs> yes, we've all known each other for a long time. And this song we're going to sing it was etched in our memories from a very, very... When the LP first came out, what, what great records. And I'm a bit speechless, actually, Bernard, having to sing one of your songs for you in front of you. We, we had all those many years of listening to you and, and loving the music so much. So here we go. This is... There's not many fish in the harbour today. <laughs> and good chorus. Great chorus. Good chorus. Yeah, good chorus. Yeah. Probably no, or we'll catch on. <laughs> From Mark Lake to Mossman for 35 years, in a 26 footer of sail, it paid for me grub and a couple of beers, but not now since a fishing. Fish, they used to be prim, they used to be kiwis to tame, but now there's old beer cans and polythene bags and things too repulsive to name. But the sun is still shining and the sky is still blue, you can still taste the salt in the spray. Still shining and the sky is still blue. You can see. 
first in Canberra, made some friends, joined a rugby club, worked as an accountant at a factory in Fishwick, married a, a local woman, uh, and his career as a musician, I, I think it's fair to say, is starting to show promise now. <laughs> he, he's a, he's, he's a, good, a good guy and we think he'll go far. Please welcome the band Pete Titchener and Emma Luca and Eric Bogle. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, when Martin Fay sent me an email to ask me to appear, and um, said we're doing a tribute show for Better Bone, and I called through with my wife Carmel, who's in the kitchen, and I said, I'm going to soon do a tribute show for Bernard Bone. And she said, How's oh, the old bastard dead then? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, she said. <laughs> I said, no, Carmel. <laughs> uh, I met Bernard for 69, I think, the year we both came across. And we used to visit him when he lived in Rosemary and City and uh, met through many festivals. And we used to walk down the seashore together, exchanging uh, bits of our lives and get to know each other. And walks I'll never forget, but it was a lot of fun. Learning experience, and uh, Bernard uh, had the best educated thumb in the whole of the musical industry. And there's no one here can actually play the guitar like him. Thank God for that. And, uh, <laughs> so I'm already <okay,> trying. <coughs> um, I, I recorded this song of Bernard's uh, on a, a LP that was released in Germany, believe it or not. I recorded three LPs for a German folk label, and this song was in one of them. It's called The Old Number 10. And it's about Bernard going back to his local pub after years in Australia. I hope we can see a familiar face, but everything had changed. And uh, so this is what the song's all about. Um, in the town I once called me home early in winter, the evening was chill. Just in for the day, and then far off tomorrow, and just a few hours to kill. And though I was indifferent, my feet were quite certain of just where they wanted to leave. 
because he was, at, you know, I think, in South America when, at a time when this song, which is called the Rose Bay Ferry, was being played every second song, it seemed, on, on the radio, at least in Canberra, where I lived. He then, Bernard then went from, from South America to London, where he worked for a while, with, with the CIA. <laughs> I'm not joking. The, the, the CIA, as you know, is, is the Chemical Industries Association <laughs> of Great Britain. And he had this, he had this absurd story about, he was, it was a lobby industry group that used to do its stuff around Westminster and, and talking to ministers and public servants. And he had, he, I can't remember whether it was him or a colleague, had to go to see Lord somebody or other in his ancestral pile out in the countryside. And he drove and drove and drove and, and went in and, and was shown in by the butler. And, and was a bit apprehensive and that shown into a library where they were and, and told to wait for, for his lordship. And there was a young, quite elegantly dressed man sitting there reading the paper. And they nodded at one another. And then 
the, ho the host, the Lord, whoever it was, came in and said, oh, hello, Bernard, good to see you. Uh, th this is the King of Denmark. <laughs> and the young man stood up and, and bowed slightly and said, Norway, actually. <laughs> so, was that you? <laughs> All right. Now, th this is something. Uh, this is something that doesn't happen every day. I would like. I'd like to introduce the King of Norway, Banjo, <laughs> ban Banjo Patterson, in the guise of Warren Fay, who's going to sing the Rose Bay Ferry. <laughs> With Marcus Holden, because um, neither of us know it. When um, <laughs> when I rang Dennis up and I said, Dennis, look, I I've decided we're going to do a tribute concert to our old chum Van Bolen, and uh, he said, Oh, really? Who's doing it? And I said, You are. <laughs> uh, I've always been out of Connie, uh, and uh, look, I'm so um, thrilled that this has taken place and that Bernard could come up. Um, I he sort of said, and what are you singing? And I said, nothing, I'm the artistic director. <laughs> and he said, no, you've got to sing something. And I better like that. And I said, well, um, I wrote Bow Ferry. And uh, of course, I've never sung it in my life, and I've had a very busy time recently. So uh, I decided to um, play with this two weeks ago and see if I could get the tune. You write ridiculous tunes. <laughs> uh, and then I conned Marcus to do it. And incidentally, uh, for those interested in the history of um, records and so forth, when I set Larrikin Records up in 1974, um, I still remember most of the catalogue numbers because I used to sit, uh, stand on sort of plastic milk crates to pick the stock orders out of the shops. And Eric's <coughs> first album on Larrikin was uh, Now I'm Easy, which was LRF, stood for long playing record format or something. Um, uh, now I'm Easy, and that was LRF 041, and Bernard Bowling's uh, album was LRF 042. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I get you 
you still playing with it? Sometimes when I get up late, I only reach the jetty at half past eight. But that doesn't ruin my worldwide trip, for the 8.37 is a battleship. Off on the dock with the guns on high, mince up manly as we pass by. If you're out of rockets, well, go up the stairs. You can get some from the fella who collects the bears. Oh, where are we going today, Mr. Nicholson? Where is it going to be? Don't turn back, turn right down the harbour and out to the open sea. And though we are but dudes and doctors, at heart we are men of the sea. So let's all be merry on the roads they bury and we finish off at circular key, my boys, we finish off at circular just then. They're the very bugger to play. The, 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 the chords are very hard and the words are tricky. They're, well, I suppose you'd say they're idiosyncratic. So that, that song was played a lot around about that time, the early 70s, on commercial radio. And there's a legend that he needed to, to really capitalise on its commercial success. He needed a comparable song with a Melbourne theme. <laughs> so he sat down, with, with wrapped his wet towel around his head, and wrote the Turak bus. <laughs> and somebody said, that's nice, Bernard, but they don't do buses in Turak. <laughs> they do trams. And Bernard said, OK, just change all the usses to ams. <laughs> I'll tell, you, I'll tell you an interesting thing that is the subject of my researches. The room you're in is called the Mitchell Room. And it's called the Mitchell Room after Major Thomas Mitchell, who was the Surveyor General of New South Wales back in the day. He fought in the Napoleonic Wars. He was very busy in the Peninsular War against Napoleon and his people. Um, he has a singular honour of having had a cockatoo named after him. <laughs> that, that's nice. Also, I read in Wikipedia, where I was doing my research, he was the last man in, in New South Wales recorded as having fought a duel. He, he was irascible by nature. Um, he said, somebody said something rude about him, and he challenged him to a duel and so one morning at dawn, they went out into Hyde Park with their pistols. The pistols, by the way, are in the Museum of Australia. Both fired, both missed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have a personal collection, sorry, connection to the next song, which is going to be sung to you by Jane Campbell and Maggie Murphy, and accompanied by Lawrence Osborne. And that is this, that in, oh dear, I knew I'd do this. My, well, I, my first marriage took place at a little church in a town called Clunes, which is in Lismore, near Lismore, in northern New South Wales. And, and it, was, it was a nice church, a nice wedding, and, and for a time a nice marriage. <laughs> The, and it, the, the Presbyterian Church, I, I can't remember what it was called, but the presiding parson was a Reverend McKinley, and he was a Scottish man, with, with, and he was, a, he was a nice man. I'd never met him before, and I've never met him since, but he was a nice man. And this inspired Bernard to write the next song, which either Jane or Maggie will introduce. Thank you, Dennis. Um, yes, we're going to be singing the, the Reverend Duncan Donald, 
And um, uh, I was just going to mention, though, that not so long ago, um, Lawrence and Maggie and I went to visit Bernard in Beechworth. And not only is Bernard a writer of terrific songs, but he's also the maker of extraordinary and beautiful gardens. And in fact, we all have some of Bernard in our own gardens. Um, it was wonderful to spend a few hours being guided by Bernard. Um, yes, so the Reverend Duncan Donald, we are going to sing. And um, on his recording of this song, Bernard says, um, I was going to call this uh, the loneliness of the long distance parson, but I couldn't fit that on the label, so it's become the Reverend Duncan Donald. And we thought we might just contribute a third title for it, Bernard, um, and we thought we might call it an ode to Israel Palau. <laughs> <laughs>
and uh, I found that he'd just come out too, but virtually the same time as me. And uh, we were talking about the, the music and the pubs and everything, and I said, this one like hotels will hold, and I said, what we're going to do is we're going to have a party next Saturday. Would you like to come over to our flat? And Bundai for a party, and he said, yeah, that would be great. And that was the beginning of the most fantastic friendship, 50 years now, <laughs> There. Um, and like uh, Dennis and Eric, so many great memories. Um, Bernie, Bernard was in the uh, legal profession and he wrote a song about uh, like the longevity of work for uh, uh, solicitors and lawyers. They just seem to keep going forever. So that's the song I'm going to sing. Um, Uncle Fred, I've just got to get the tune in there. The other one. I was practicing and um, Jane and Maggie still get on to me about my Birmingham accent and I was practicing it and, uh, and I said, Uncle Fred's a lawyer. And then I says, Maggie says, liar? She says, it's lawyer. Jane, they'll never understand it. I says, lawyer, liar? What's the difference? <laughs> My uncle Fred retired last week at the age of fancy two. So he tore it down and he proffered to prepare a little joke. My uncle Fred's a boyer and he lives in Sydney town. In the office is Brindle, Bogle, Trimble, Cock and Brown. It's an old Flowers on. 
the office bar with a pencil jar, the cashier lost his head, and he drank lemonade, the rain supply to the elbow. church competition and when Brian, the story is that when Brian rang and said he had a bunch of blokes and, and, and could he join, they said yes but you know we're mostly, we have mostly religious affiliations, don't you? And Brian said that's fine we're all lapsed Catholics <laughs> and so it was, so we, we ran on one time, Bernard had come up to, to Canberra 
and came on to join us. I suppose we were we were short of blokes. Um, oh, that's not very flattering, is it? We were delighted to have a soccer player of his status uh, and good standing join us. And we, we ran onto the ground in a Canberra winter's day, and there was a very po-faced referee and the other team who may well have been the Reed Methodists, or perhaps the Yarralumla Baptists, or perhaps the Salvation Army, who were very dirty. <laughs> and the referee said, well, before we start, I'd like to ask the captain of the other team, never us, to say a prayer. <laughs> and so they all bowed their heads like this. Picture Israel for life. <laughs> they all bowed their heads, and we all tried to stop laughing. And one of them, this spotty young man, said, Almighty God, we ask you to bless our enterprise today, save us from injury, and Christ help us to play by the rules. <laughs> and Bernard said, and Christ help you if you don't. <laughs> immediately a penalty for blasphemy. <laughs> well, I, think that, I think that Bernard's nicest song, the, the, the most lovely tune and, and wonderful words is called Send the City Sunshine. And he'll, he may talk to us a little later and he'll explain how he came to write it. Write it. But it was about a, a, a man called Michael Chase <coughs> with whom he worked who was a wise old man. Bernard might tell you more about him. Um, and he was of a sort that I don't know exists much these days, who didn't take it all that seriously. He was good at what he did. He was a lawyer. Um, but he thought that it was just as important to go to lunch for a couple of hours and why just have one bottle of wine <laughs> with, with, your, with your roast beef. I don't know that you do that now. Anyway, the, 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 so Send the City Sunshine was the title of Bernard's third, one of his Bernard's albums. I'd love to have sung it for you, but the tune just defeated me. I couldn't, I couldn't work out the chords, I'm embarrassed to say. But, but the good news is that this gives you a chance to appreciate the really wonderful words. And here to read it somewhere is Justin Murphy. <laughs> this has been a slight way testing in, in digesting this, this beautiful, beautiful song. And uh, I hope just by speaking it, I can do it justice. Thank you. Is that better? And at the end, they asked him if he thought it quite the thing for bankers to pen ballads or for city men to sing. For city men have rules and regulations to obey. Their coats of many colours are predominantly grey. But because his day was ending, he could give a straight reply. So he said he thought that city men should learn to laugh and cry. And let the light that shines their night illuminate the day. And since he could not sing for them, then surely he could pray. So Lord, you'd better send the city sunshine so that city men could see the light of day. Through the neon signs still shimmer yet somehow it seems dimmer today. But when the city heard him sing, its children weren't impressed. They said our aged colleague now is surely past his best. For in city days and city ways, it's known we should hold dear, not those we choose, but those we use, and those that buy us beer. To work we give, each day we live until the day we die, and only madmen think of laughter, and only weak men ever cry. And the young must prove how, unlike him, their fires have not gone cold, 
but steadily becoming far more pompous than the old. So, Lord, you'd better send the city sunshine so that city men might know the night from the day. Through the markets looking flatter, it doesn't seem to matter today. But his prayer for them was not yet done, for then they heard him say, May they tread a little gentle on their journey through the day, and learn that when their men, so full of life, begin to die, it starts when men of laughter lose the twinkle from their eye. So, Lord, you'd better send the city sunshine so that city men might see to find their way. In the city, bells are ringing. Then why is no one singing? So there's a matter of huge controversy. Who was the first chairman of the New South Wales Folk <laughs> Federation? Was it, was it Bernard Bowen? Was it Danny Watson? No, whatever, there is no doubt as to who the current chairman of the New South Wales Folk Federation is. It's Brian Jonathan. <laughs> there is some doubt as to who it might be because you can never tell in this game, you know, when you might walk out the door and find, you know, I'm the president. <laughs> I'll have to do so. <laughs> um, excuse me. I'm only doing this because the artistic director did it as well. So yes, I'm the current um, chairman, although they call, they call me the president these days because I think maybe maybe the Folk Federation was a bit more left-wing, even more left-wing in those days than it is now. You look as dumb as Trump. <laughs> so anyway, look, when I, when I, am I coming through? So when I, when I saw this song the first time, when I was asked to sing it, I thought, my God, nothing has changed at all. <laughs> and um, just to prove that, I, I ended up writing a couple of verses at the end myself, but um, nothing's changed. My voice when I sing is no heavenly chorus. In fact, they do say like a flatulent walrus, and I strum with my thumb, which sets critics all snorting. They don't realize I say fingers for cotton. My knowledge of folk music is quite abysmal. In learned discussion, I stand looking dismal, but because I talk aloud and with strange pronunciation, they've made me the chairman of the folk federation. When they made their decision that I would react just like nuclear fission, I've gone mad with power. And just to prove to you, I'm changing the title from chairman to Fuhrer. <laughs> a book of my thoughts will be issued to members in a feast for my birthday. They'll hold each December and to stop the committee from trying this tricks on their own. All turned into an dentist, and I thought my alloy was some friend of the aunties. I hate all those songs where men screw their sisters, and I thought that Garfunkel was something like blisters. <laughs> but now I'm the chairman of the Folk Federation. There's going to be changes and new regulations, a new water will flood all my bases and trebles, and my secret. Will take care of the rebels. When 
my harmonies waver when I stand quite solemn. You'll all smile politely and say, very modern. When I walk out the loo with me, zipper left open, no men shall depart. And all women start hoping, all singers from Melbourne will come, cause we need you and pay and sing here for peanuts. Procedures, all Scotsmen will get on the next train to Peebles, and the Bush Music Club will see nothing but fields. Now, songs about drinking, and songs about whoring, and songs about sheep are exceedingly boring. No, we with some ballads and songs of the sea. In future, all songs will be sung about he, me. <laughs> And to show your respect, I will recommend that you might all like to think of erecting a statue, and a guard will stand by it by night and by day with the purpose of keeping the pigeons away. But here comes disaster. My goose has been rumbled. My noose has been knotted. My bar has crumbled. They formed a committee. With Irish and Scots on, headed by one Daniel Rasputin Watson. <laughs> All of my scheme and ten works gone to waste. They're now singing ballads of feeling and taste. Good words and great music are flooding the nation. Balls to the New South Wales Folk Federation. Now, I'll just bring it up to date a bit. I wrote a few words myself. When I said, hey committee, let's do a folk fest, they were polite. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> when I said, hey committee, let's stage a folk fest, they sighed. We're retired, only here for the rest. But now it's all done, and no longer troubling. We won't send you back on the next plane to Dublin. So thanks all for coming. You made street, pit street. I don't know who's more chuffed, Wilson Park in a rust. The fame would be dead if we, if you hadn't bought tickets. Thanks be to God that you didn't say, stick it. <laughs> seem to change between oh, slapstick W.S. Gilbert and also very um, gentle, tender, loving, loving sorts of songs, full of regrets and, and sometimes, <coughs> and, and, and um, deep thoughts. And, and all good, all good, great words. I was always so envious. So this is one of the latter. This is Rhonda Moore, whom you know. Uh, the song. Oh, okay. And I think I need my cheat sheet as well. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I've known Bernard for, I guess, since 1969. Um, we're, all, we're all very involved in the folk scene then. I was from the, the shack that all had in Northern Beaches and still am. The reincarnation of the shack. And uh, I always remember it was a very special night when Bernard came down to the shack. And then, of course, we were at the, the 20th Century Folk Club in the 80s, and that was always, again, a really special night when we had Bernard. So, so this is this lovely little song that I, I really like of Bernard's. It has a beautiful way of his words. And so it stands to reason, and so it runs to rhyme. But this matter of things mending merely takes a little time. The peddler speaks the engine and we'll soon be on our way. The captain says he's sorry, he regrets the short delay. One moment in a lifetime made as easy as can be. The banker here has had his fee. I've had my pot of tea. And so it stands to reason. And so it runs to rhyme. But this matter of things mending merely takes a little time. 
know old friends, my dearest loves, you don't need me to say, who waited and who willed me on, that I might sing today, your love on sway this lovely day, please pass it down the line, that the process of repairing takes a tempering of time. And so it stands to reason, and so it runs to rhyme, that the matter of things mending merely takes a little time. And so it stands to reason, and so it runs to rhyme, that this matter of Song Festival. Uh, we were surprised to get the invitation, but we did it. And, uh, anyway, I got a wee bit sick of the whole this poor face political shit. <laughs> and uh, so, and I used to try to ingratiate myself in to the Germans by singing the horse festival. No, um, <laughs> by uh, uh, trying to introduce my songs in sort of broken German, you know. And so I'd say, uh, uh, <laughs> this. This indeed is called Basingstoke. Uh, you were a Toten Katzen. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, Toten Katzen? That's a fucking dead cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I translated the money. Aye. I should have been more circumspect because they only gave us a single ticket to get there. <laughs> and not a return to get back, but they wait a week for that. Okay. Okay.
With a taste for canary, <laughs> I come somewhere between a fritter and a fairy. <laughs> That's my favourite line. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> <Wrong one. laughs> when he fell into the fire. Now, it's time to hear from the man who made all this possible. Would you please welcome <laughs> Bernard Ball. That'd be lovely. 
I could give a couple of copies to my mates and send one to my mother in England. <laughs> that would be terrific. I did actually send her one, and she was very annoyed by the language. <laughs> <laughs> Can't win them all. But, but anyway, I, um, I sort of made the record, but then bloody, uh, what was his name, Clive Robertson started to play it on the um, breakfast show, just when the bosses at work <laughs> were all driving into it. <laughs> and now, bear in mind, I've not been here very long. In Britain, I'm quite sure, as Dennis said, a few years after that, I went back and worked in London. And I'm quite sure, had the same thing happened in London, my phone would have rung and I'd been asked to go up and see somebody senior and they would have said, oh, what about these um, um, little ditties that uh, <laughs> you've been singing? Uh, I'm sure they're a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> afterwards my phone did ring and it was Jack Campbell, he should be remembered forever, the assistant general manager. And I went up thinking, here we go. I got in and he was obviously busy and he said, oh Bernard, he said, look mate, I'm sorry I'm busy, but he said, I love that song of yours, the play. My missus was wondering, if, could we get a copy? <laughs> Kissed him. <laughs> <laughs> this was Australia for me, you know, absolutely lovely, so different. And so for 20 odd years afterwards, I was able to live a sort of double life. And, and it really was a terrific thing because it meant that neither one of them owned you. You know, there was always something else. And so it was that many years later, when I moved to the country and lived amongst trees and things, <laughs> that I um, was doing a lot of travelling, as someone said, really enjoying my garden, <coughs> pardon me, and I just said, enough, enough. And that at that point, I just decided to stop doing it. And, uh, however, one thing that I must mention is that I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> About five, five or six years ago, I gather, a friend of mine from Beechworth was going through Sydney and they played one of the records. And then the fellow afterwards says, and there's the late great Vernon. <laughs> Bless his heart, he rang him up and said I wasn't. But, right? But I'm not. <laughs> well, as you see, not quite anyway. Yeah. But, but, excuse me. <coughs> but anyway, I sort of um, was grateful for that. But the story was out. And it's mixed up. It was, it was all out. Because then somebody tells me, this was a year or so later that there was a committee in the ACT government that chooses people and names of people for the naming of new streets in the suburbs that they're building. And I was down for the Bernard Boland Crescent. <laughs> and then they heard I wasn't dead. <laughs> and, and apparently they have to pick people they only pick people who are dead because you might get up to bad things afterwards. <laughs> and, and felt, or, or indeed, as we're now learning these days, might have been up to bad things all your bloody life. <laughs> Nobody knew about it. So whether I'm on the list now, I'm not sure. Uh, and I don't propose to let them know when I die. <laughs> but suffice to say, bless you all, um, it's been a, a real honour. To, to truly, it has been a surprise and an honour to me to listen to all my friends singing. And the lovely things you've said, it was totally unexpected for me. 
and I'm so grateful. Thank you, thank you again. Thank, folks, thanks all for coming. Bernard, thank you for the music. Gary, all the singers, thank you very much.